you for uh, having me here today. Thank you, Misha, for inviting me. Uh, my name is Dr. Tommy McRoy. I'm a sports and family medicine physician, and uh, my practice is a concierge medicine practice. I just want to tell you a little bit about my background briefly. I am uh, born in Lake Forest, Illinois, and then raised in Lakeland, Florida for most part. And I went to school at University of Florida. I went to medical school at the University of South Florida, and then I did training at the University of South Florida in Morton Plant Meese in a combined program that's based out of Clearwater for family medicine. And then I did a additional year of training in sports medicine fellowship. Uh, how many of you have heard of concierge medicine or know what that means? Okay. Anybody care to share what they think it means or they know it means? I would, I would think it's you coming to us, but that's probably wrong. Okay, so you say it's the, the doctor goes to the patient. Okay. Anybody else? I, I think that um, whoever practices concierge medicine uh, must have a staff trying to collect from a church company. Must have a staff. Oh. <laughs> So, so what is concierge medicine? So concierge medicine, is, I term it membership medicine because that basically defines the relationship. The patients are members of a practice. And that's not to say that our patients are uh, not, that other patients aren't members of other practices, but our patients are truly members, meaning that we derive our revenue only from our patients. We do not have outsource, outside sources of income except for the you know, minor things that we may sell in the store like products or uh, you know, equipment. Most of our revenue is derived from our patient. Why is that? Because our patient is our concern. Our patient is our uh, reason for being. We do not have any uh, relationships with insurance companies directly. The only way our uh, practice works with an insurance company is on behalf of our patients. So we utilize our patient's insurance to the best of their ability. And so whether that means that you have no insurance or whether that means you have full coverage insurance that covers everything, we help our patients uh, utilize their insurance to the best of their ability. And why do we do that? Because we want to spend as much time with our patients as possible. Our patients are, are seen by us sometimes once a year, sometimes weekly. And the reason we are able to do that is because our patient load is very small compared to a normal practice. Our patient load or our patient volume or panel when we're, full, when we're completely done enrolling patients for our practice will be about 400, maybe even less. A traditional quote unquote practice may have upwards of $5,000 or 5,000 patients per provider, they call them. So that could be a nurse practitioner, a PA, or a doctor. So that's not unusual. 2,000 to 5,000 is kind of typical. Uh, so why do we do what we do? How many of you have ever tried to call your doctor and they said they can't see you that day? Okay. How many of you have ever called your doctor and they said, not only can we not see you this day, we can't see you this week. You have to be seen in a few weeks for an acute problem. And what did they tell you to do? Uh, set an appointment, we'll see you in a month or so. Right, so wait for us or they'll say go to urgent care. To me, when I went to medical school, I did not go to this medical school for four years, an undergraduate for four years, and then training for four years so that I could not be there for my patients. That was not my reason for going to medical school. My reason for going to medical school was so I could learn how to become a doctor. And my reason for becoming a sports and family medicine physician was so I could basically provide as much medical care as, as, as in, within reason to as many uh, to a patient and help them optimize their health. So my goal for being a family medicine and sports medicine doctor is to be able to minimize the travel that our patient has to do throughout the community to get what medical care they need. And I can do that through my training because it, I can handle probably 98% of things that people present with definitively through my training. I can take care of colds, uh, blood pressure problems, diabetes, uh, acute problems like if you cut your finger or um, anything that's anything that's within the realm of uh, from fractures to colds and everything in between is like what I like to say. Um, why do we do concierge medicine? Back to our point is we want to help patients optimize their health. One of the things that makes me really sad is when I see in the news that there's a young person who's died. And I don't mean like a young person in their 20s or 30s. That's sad too. But I mean a young person in their 50s. There's a lot of times there's people walking around with things that they do not even know because in the short visits that they have with their family doctor, they never get into that portion. They never get into that, um, that deep into their um, medical history. And that's not the fault of the doctor. The doctors are under so much pressure to see as many patients as possible 
and increasingly have burdens that are not medical. So there's regulations that have been passed that make doctors ask things that are completely unrelated to the visit. So someone may come in and for a sprained finger, for instance, and not only do we take care of their sprained finger if you're in the insurance-based practice, but you also have to know what color are they, what language do they speak, what's their BMI, did they get a tetanus shot, when was their last colonoscopy, all that just so they can get paid well being not punished by the, uh, the third party payers. And that's all the types of things that go into your visit besides your sprained finger. And that's irrelevant to the visit. So what we do in concierge medicine or membership medicine, we eliminate all that outside influence. We just take care of what is important for our patients. Um, the other reason that we do concierge medicine is because it allows us to help people who do not have insurance have affordable health care. We always hear about affordable health care, affordable health care. Well, affordable health care may be affordable for some people, may not be affordable for some people. Depends on your income, if you can get insurance even sometimes, because sometimes if you make too much money, so to speak, you'll go to get insurance, quote unquote, and it's five, six hundred dollars a month for one individual. Well, why are you going to pay uh, six thousand dollars a year if you go to a doctor once a year, just to avoid the IRS penalty? So what we do is we help patients figure out ways to get the best insurance for their needs, including, if not getting insurance, a health sharing ministry, which is a way that you can use uh, the carve out in the law that allows you to have a religious exemption to buying insurance, to buying a plan that's like insurance that covers your catastrophic needs, but also allows you not to be penalized by the IRS. And the other thing that we do for patients without insurance is our prices are for labs and medications is to our patients is what we pay. So for instance, if you come to me for an annual physical, if you have just a standard physical, I'm gonna order five labs. I'm gonna order a complete blood count, a complete metabolic panel, a thyroid stimulating hormone test, urinalysis, and a lipid panel. Okay, those five tests. In our office, that costs about 40 bucks to us. That's what your cost is if you're a member. If you have no insurance or if you have a high deductible that doesn't cover that, that's great news because if you went to the lab and paid for those same five labs, it'd probably be what, Tracy, $500? Oh, probably or, more than or whatever. It's going to be a magnet, order of magnitude uh, higher. So that's the other way that we help patients. Um, the other thing that we do for concierge medicine is if you're at home, let's say, on a Friday night and you slip and fall, let's say, or your child does, hits her forehead, what is the immediate reaction that you got to do if you're not sure? Where are you going to take your, your, your kid? Emergency room. Emergency room. And so you go to emergency room. Hopefully you'll be seen within an amount of time, uh, less than a few hours, but maybe it, maybe it's a busy night and you may be there till four o'clock in the morning. And then the doctor rolls in, he looks at it, he's like, yeah, this is fine. You just put a bandage on, it doesn't need stitches. Well, you didn't know. You were scared, your child hit their head. Uh, what we are able to do, concierge medicine, is that if you're our patient, as soon as that happens and you're not sure what to do, call us on the cell phone. Call me on the cell phone, text me, or whatever it is. Get in touch as soon as possible, because I like to short circuit those trips to emergency room whenever possible. Many times we've done that, weekends especially. Mornings, early mornings. I got a text message once from a patient driving into work, or he was driving from hockey to work, plays hockey at 5 o'clock in the morning, busted his tooth with a puck. He just called me let me know he's going to not be at the appointment that day because he has to go to emergency room right now. I said, well, what happened? Well, I hit myself with a, you know, I got hit in the mouth with a puck and knocked the tooth loose. And I said, well, show me a, you know, text me, you know, you know, pull over or whatever, show me a picture. So he, he sent me a picture. He, he didn't pull over, so don't tell anybody because he was texting and driving. But anyway, he took a picture, selfie, he busted tooth. I said, well, don't go to emergency room. They ain't go, they're not going to do anything for you in emergency room. I said, You're, do you feel okay? Do you have any loss of consciousness? No. I said, well, go to a dentist. That would be the best thing. Get an x-ray. And then, you know, if you can still make your appointment, come in. Anyway, the short of it is, is he had high deductible insurance. If he would have rolled into the emergency room, he would have been there, seen for maybe, maybe he would have been seen immediately. Maybe they weren't busy. Either way, he's going to walk out of there with a bill of at least, what, $1,500 for them to tell him to go dentist. So his membership fee was paid for almost completely by that one phone call. So that's the other thing we do. So I like to tell patients, what we do as a concierge medicine physician, physician is, when you are a, a member of our practice, we don't necessarily provide X amount of dollars worth of medical care. We provide medical care, but we also provide the ability for you to know that no matter what, you're going to have a physician, a medical staff that's at your, at, at, available to you when you need us, 
and you're also going to have to never going to have to worry about waiting. You're never going to wait on hold. You're never going to wait for a return phone call, and you're certainly never going to wait for an appointment when you come in to see us. You're never going to walk in and there's this, you know, uh, row of aluminum chairs with patients just staring at each other and coughing, and you know, we don't do that way because that's I think not the way that the doctor-patient relationship should be. The doctor-patient relationship should be a, an intimate relationship where you know that person's life, you know their medical problems, and you can help them uh, become as healthy as possible. And through our membership, we're able to do that because we're able to take our time and drill down and really find out what is it that our patients are uh, having or feeling or needing or whatever and help them uh, optimize their health. That's our motto. We, we help people optimize their health. And so now I would like to ask, open up the floor to see if there's any questions because there's a lot of questions sometimes people have related to insurance, related to uh, medical care, related to what's going to happen, so to speak, in the future and that type of thing. Yes, ma'am. How did you arrive at 400? I did math based on our membership uh, fee. And I said, how much is it going to be to where we can sustain a practice at the way we'd like to sustain it and do the level of care that we'd like to do? So membership medicine encompasses direct primary care and concierge medicine. Okay, direct primary care is called blue collar concierge medicine by some people. But basically it means the membership fee is less. Therefore, their volume is higher. So you can have a concierge medicine physician somewhere in New York City, potentially, or Seattle, where it started, may charge ten, fifteen thousand dollars a year. Okay? So most people can't afford that, or if they can, they don't wish to spend that on their membership fee, which is understandable. Some people do, which is understandable as well. Then on the other end, you'll have some places where their membership fee is so uh, or their their operation or their demographics are such that they can charge only forty dollars a month. So it depends on how many patients you want to see, but that's how I got it. We did the math and we said you know, how many patients do we need to operate this facility and pay the bills and all that? And then that's, and it may go lower. It would probably skew lower than higher if we got to 400. What is the membership fee? How many is it? The membership fee, or what is our membership fee? Our membership fee for an adult greater than 40 years old is 1920 for the year. If you are 40 and below, uh, for 18 to 39, then it is 1620. And then our children, children of dependent or dependent children, meaning 17 and uh, younger than our, our of our patients, is 364 a year. So it's a, just a token payment, really. And if you pay in full, you get discount. Okay. Do you so on the range of, of, of what you're able to do? Do you, you like wellness visits and physical and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, every patient has a yearly physical, um, and in that physical, we block two hours. Now, whether or not we take two hours or not depends. Maybe sometimes you do, maybe sometimes you don't. But we block two hours for you. That's your time, and we try to address routine things. How's you know? What what do you need for cancer screening? Uh, is there any been any significant changes in your life? Is there anything that's bothering you? Is there any game plan that we need to change going forward from last year? And then we kind of do a we reconvene, so to speak. It's like if you met with your financial advisor once a year, and you're just like, okay, let's look at the portfolio. Where where are we going with this, you know? Or your attorney, you know, doing estate planning. You're just that's what I see myself more as than a typical typical insurance based doctor. I see myself more as an advisor. I'm here to give you as much knowledge as I have to help you get better. Much like a financial advisor is there to help you make your money do whatever it needs to do for you, particular to your needs. And so. <clears throat> Yes, ma'am. Then, oh yeah, back to your point. Oh, no. Right. Well, our our practice is uh, not based on insurance. So, whatever the patient's insurance is has nothing to do with us, as long as you're not an HMO patient. If you have an HMO, you are you have to, you're constrained within that HMO. That's the design of an HMO product. You are only allowed to see HMO physicians. <clears throat> if you have a PPO, you can go anywhere you want, then we'll refer you anywhere you want. For Back to your question about annual physical, yes, it covers annual physical and any follow-up you need. We have some patients that come in weekly for follow-ups, usually for nursing visits like testosterone injections or vitamin injections. We do that complimentary vitamin injection. 
Uh, but back to your point about networks is we are not restricted by insurance. And actually, I have a, a network of colleagues that I can usually get people because I got them on my cell phone. We had a patient recently come in who needed to be seen urgently. And they called and I said, uh, well, tell the doctor who I am that I referred you, okay? And she said, okay, okay, I will do that. So the wife went out, she called, she, said, she came back in, and this face was just sad. I said, well, what happened? Well, they can't see us till September, and this was like last month. I'm like, well, don't worry about that. I will call later. I will call my friend later, who's the physician. I will tell him who you are, and then we'll, and I'll call you later, figure it out. Anyway, we kept talking, kept talking. She goes out, comes back in, she goes, oh, we're being seen Thursday. So in that short period of time, they already knew who I was, connected, boom. He was seen in two days, which was very important because within two days, not only was he seen in the office, he was actually admitted to the hospital because his condition was such. So what did that save him? It saved him potentially a, a, a bad illness that got worse because he didn't wait till September, obviously, and also saved him a trip to emergency room, which we all know is not the best place to go unless you're having a true emergency when they can get you back as soon as possible, which is, you should go then. Yes, sir? So... I certainly see the benefits because one, I don't like going to the doctor, but two, I like kind of the personal attention. But so, sell me on for someone like me that would only go for a physical. Mm -hmm. I need to go to, to get a physical just because I don't. I don't go to the doctor any other time. Mm -hmm. I, I get a cold. I sleep it all. I mean, I, I don't you know do that. How is how is paying a membership fee of thirteen or six? I'm under forty. Mm -hmm. $1,600 a year, mm -hmm. beneficial for me just to come see you one time? That's, that's a great question. And I like to tell people, whatever your health status is, we want to optimize it. If you go to the doctor once a year, that's all you have to do. We want to make sure you go to the doctor once a year as much as possible the rest of your life. What we also do is we offer preventative... Uh, we, we do. If you're ever familiar with an executive health physical... So executive health physicals where you come in, you, you, you'd be seen by a physician, they give you like this nice little, uh, uh, maybe a robe or something that has your name on it, and then they run you through a battery of tests, and then they tell you at the end of the day, hey, you're all, you're all good, your MRI was normal, your, your spirometry is normal, the, the eye doctor said your eyes look normal, congratulations, uh, $5,000. And then you're like, well, a clean bill of health, $5,000, I'm so happy now. For one more year, I'm good to go. So we don't do that. But what we do is we do something similar. We say, look, we're going to optimize your health. And if it, it's only one visit that it takes, we can do that in one visit. But what we really find is our patients like to come in for other things. So you may come in for your annual physical, but you may also want to come in for the vitamin shot. You may also want to just come in and chat. You know, we may review a lab and then instead of just saying, look, you have to make a come in and make a copay and come in, I like said, well, just come by the office. Whenever's convenient for you, come by the office or call me on Call me on Skype or FaceTime. That's the other thing that we can do for busy individuals. Let's say that you are come once a year. That one time that you're sick, you're on vacation in Colorado. And you're out there stuck and you don't know what to do. You're like, I guess i got to go find an urgent care now because I don't know what to do. Or maybe I'll call Dr. Tommy. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Hey, what's going on? I have a sore throat. Okay, well, well let me look at it. Okay, well, hold on. You know, go to video. Uh, you know, find a good light. Or take a picture. And then I'm like, well, that looks like it could be strep. Take these antibiotics. When you get back in, come and see me so we can make sure it's gone. Okay? Or if you get worse, go to urgent care. So we optimize people's health. So if it takes one visit, great. But we find that people like to come in just to chat. We have a patient lounge. We have an exercise club uh, that's twice a week. So that's available to our patients. But for the patient who is healthy, that is great. And we want to make sure they stay healthy. But there are some things in your family history that... You may not find on your cursory seven-minute exam, so that's why it helps to have two hours. That seven-minute exam that you're that you're used to getting in a typical practice, where they see 40 patients a day, uh, may not uncover that uh, that 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 coronary history that I hear that I that I see coming. You know, your uncle had a heart attack, your father did. Well, maybe you should have a homocysteine test. Well, what's homocysteine? Well, that's an amino acid that sometimes is elevated in individuals who have a family history of coronary disease that's strong. Maybe we should check that. And maybe if we check that, we find it's high. And then if we find it's high, we'll put you on a vitamin B complex, and it'll go down. And then you're healthy now, and you're also healthy in 15 years. Whereas maybe if you didn't check that, you're one of these poor individuals, which I read about all the time, unfortunately, who are 55 years old, seemingly healthy, die. I hate that. Because I think, I was telling Tracy the other day, I wonder if some of those individuals 
went to their doctor and there was something that was not seen, not because of the doctor's fault, but because of the constraints of the system that squeezes that time down to such a small amount and reduces that doctor-patient relationship to something that is akin to a, uh, a cattle call, you know, or, or you know, a health department visit where you're just taking care of putting out some fires. That's the thing we like about is I like to keep people healthy and not put out fires. When you're a concierge medicine patient, we rarely have to put out fires because we see you when you're healthy, we see you when you're sick, and we optimize and try to find all those little landmines and make sure they're defused. Yes, sir. So, besides the membership fee, what is the cost? So, if I have kids, I pay them $400 or whatever, mm -hmm. and they come in three times a week for six weeks. Which right. One gets sick, the other gets sick, the other gets sick. Well, we include the cost of medications with that. So if your kids come in or in the test, so let's say your children come in, like they got strep throat again, like, well, we'll strep them again, you know, all that's included. The only thing that you pay for outside of uh, what we don't cover in the office is medications that are prescribed. Okay? So, but if you need an injection of uh, Rocephin, for instance, antibiotic, or your child does, boom, we'll do that. That's included. So all visits are included? Visits and procedures are included. God forbid your child breaks their arm. Okay, and it's non-displaced, and I'm a sports medicine doctor. I'll cast it. Okay, I'll cast it, and we'll follow them and everything. That's all inclusive. Uh, so yeah, I'm getting. Hey, a question. Yeah, you've got you, you get paid by the hour. So if, if you kind of think of that, your time is worth something. So oh, that's the other thing. Yeah. Emergency room, or your wife's going to sit there. If you, you're thinking about that, if you're. Yeah. Oh, I know. I, I get that's why I like the concept. Yeah. For me, it's because again, I don't even I don't even go to a physical. I need to get one. But yeah. I'm not making, I'm not making, but I'm saying it's it's tough to say okay because I get a free fit with my insurance. Yeah. Free yep, and that's true. To pay the. That's the thing is the you have to see if it's important and if it's worth it to you. And I never say it's worth it to everybody. It's certainly not for everybody. It's probably worth. It's probably. We're, our, our target audience is probably one percent of the population. To tell you the truth, maybe a little bit more, but not certainly not in double digits. Not in our you know the way we type, typically think of medical care, but we've been accustomed to thinking of health insurance as health care equals doctors, and it doesn't. Can I ask her a question? Yeah, for, yeah. Answer. And this is part of the wrong way to phrase it, but I can't think of another word. But the mentality of my doctor and how they think about my care now they they don't have to think about it. Yes. I take so many prescriptions for diabetes I cannot keep up with what he's giving me. Yeah. Not to say even the cost yeah. of the prescription. Can't find anybody that wants to talk about alternatives. Oh, yeah. Essential oils. Yeah. Uh, just anything. All of them are just yeah. giving any prescription. Yeah. Is that how do you look at it? Well here's what here's let's do let's do your first scenario, okay. Let's say you're you're the doctor. You have Let's say you have, what, every 10 minutes is scheduled or every 15 minutes? Well, we were 10 minutes at USF. So Tracy and I used to work at USF together. Every 10 minutes you got a, your patient scheduled, okay? Let's say you come in, you're complicated. I'm not saying you're bad, but you have you have medical problems that need to be addressed, right? I don't get seven minutes with him, so. You've made your appointment. You've waited three months. Here you are. You have your problems. And you not only have diabetes, and I'm not going to say this what you have, but you have diabetes. You have a sore throat today. Your knees have been hurting, and you're so tired. Okay. So the doctor's going to do this. You're going to sit down. You're going to start talking. The clock starts running. He's starting to type in his computer, all the check boxes. Is she white? Does she speak English? What's her BMI? What's her tetanus? When does she have a colonoscopy? In the meantime, you're talking. Blah, 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 blah. And then suddenly you get all of your click boxes done so the government doesn't punish you from the physician standpoint. You're like, okay, now what's going on? All right, I'm tired. Okay, uh, do you sleep? Yeah, okay, get more sleep. Uh, what's next? Diabetes. Well, what's your glucose? It was 300 this morning. Jesus. Okay. Um, and another medicine. Okay, what's next? My knee hurts. Orthopedics. What's next? Uh, my sore throat. Oh, let me look at your sore throat. Look, uh, looks viral. Take some Tylenol. Call me if it doesn't get better. You call three days later. You get some nurse. They're like, we don't even know. You weren't seen. I said, well, seen. I was just there. I paid my copay. Uh, we don't have any record you were ever seen at this office. Uh, we spelled your name wrong. And it's just like, you want to just jump off a building or something. So what we do is, obviously, we don't do that. Our patients get as much time as they need. If it's an hour, if it's two hours, whatever. But what we find is, if we have a complicated patient come in, we've had complicated patients come in, seen a lot. One of our patients was seen like 25 times in one year. And not always for something 
that was bad, but we were constantly, we're, let's check this, come back. Try this and come back. And guess how many times we see her now? We see her like twice. Because we cured her, quote unquote. You know, we fixed the issues. We put out all these fires. It's like if you have a house that you're remodeling and it's falling apart. And well, you start with whatever. You see, you, you replace the sills on the window so that it's not drafty anymore and that you're not getting the problems with the drywall. Then you replace the drywall that's been messed up. Then there's a problem with your roof, so you replace the shingles. Now, so slowly you're starting to fix things. And then before long, oh, you just have to do routine maintenance, you know? So that's kind of what we do. Optimize your house, optimize your health, whatever. Yes, sir. Now, obviously you don't deal with insurance, but a question for you is, do you offer memberships on a business level where a, a, an employer is able to uh, provide their employees the same type of membership? Yeah, we actually have, yeah, we have a brochure to that effect. And that's the, that's the thing that we're trying to get across to business owners is there is an alternative to the way that you have been told it has to be done. And so, yes, we do. We offer memberships that are very flexible, that allow patients and their employers to uh, have a plan that's a group plan, so to speak. And so we can cater it to your needs. If you would like to have, you know, just a straight membership, that's fine. If you want to have the membership and then have us come and do a, a, a monthly, or I'm sorry, a quarterly talk on some specific topic, then that's, what we try to do is, as much as possible, educate people about their health and about their options. But yes, we do have business plans called Business Rx. And it's basically concierge medicine for business. Sure. And um, it's, for, it's for people who have insurance maybe, or maybe it's for people who would love to give insurance to their uh, employees, but they just can't afford it. So they're gonna pay for half of their membership of the, to go here. And I, and I never say I'm in, in insurance. You know, that's the other thing they say. That's the most, one of the most popular questions. Well, does this, does this replace my insurance? No. <clears throat> I think you should have member insurance that fits your needs. In my opinion, I believe insurance should be used for things that are rare, expensive, and unpredictable. And those are those are uh, subjective things to you. So expensive to one person may not be expensive to another. Expensive to one person may be three hundred dollars, maybe three thousand to another, or thirty thousand to another. So expensive, rare, uh, you can't predict it, un and then um, unpredictable or rare is doesn't happen that often. So an annual physical is rare. Okay, is it unpredictable? No, it comes every year. Is it expensive? No, it's not. You know, so should you have insurance for that? Well, it depends if you want to, because you're prepaying for insurance. When you say you have insurance, you have a health plan. A health plan has an insurance component and it has a health plan, which if you have children in college or you want to college yourself, you know, they have a cafeteria plan. And little Johnny's going to go to college and he, he's going to do well in college, so I'm going to have the cafeteria plan where he gets 21 meals a week at the cafeteria. So Johnny goes for the first three weeks, he goes twice a week. For the rest of the time, he eats pizza, but you've paid for 21 meals a week for a whole semester and you just Wasted that money. Well, it is what it is. Yes, ma'am. Well, my, uh, my there. I sold insurance for years, health insurance, and now I work for an insurance company. But insurance companies are voluntary. They don't have to pay anything. Right. 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 Ryan, I'm sure someone's fun doing that. Um, to understand that your insurance is for catastrophic. It's not for every little tiny thing that's bumping through. It's for cancer and exactly. And, MS, exactly. And, and they're building the policies that way. You know. Yeah. Three thousand dollar not unheard of. So you're not really. The unfortunate. Free physical, but you got a three thousand dollar deductible. Yeah. So anything else you need, you're paying for anyway. Yeah. So a high deductible is the, is the is where we've gone. Yeah. Now, the, the unfortunate thing is a high deductible insurance plan in the past was affordable. You could get it for $120. Now you cannot because you have a high deductible, but you also have to have these mandated coverage. So they have to cover certain things. And they also have to cover people who choose not to get insurance through their own activities. Are there people out there who are destitute and would like to have insurance if they could and, and someone gives it to them and that's great? Yes, that's called charity. But are there people out there who take advantage of the system and don't work on purpose and have these huge irresponsible activities that they don't, we've seen them in the grocery store, they'll have two loads. They'll have all their groceries and then they'll have their cigarettes and their beer. Pay for all their groceries with the EBT card, pay for their cigarettes and the beer with cash. Are there people out there like that taking advantage of insurance? Absolutely. And that's what makes the price inflated and that's what's unethical, I think, but it's immoral. But anyway, back to our point is, yeah, so high deductible insurance, yeah, so our plan fits in that. 
That's the other one. You know, most everybody now has it. So I'm, not, I'm saying, look, if you're going to have to spend three thousand dollars or two thousand dollars, and you never spend that much, you, could, you might want to consider paying for this. You don't have to, but just consider it. Because if you go to an insurance-based practice and say, I need to pay cash, you're going to pay the contracted rate, whichever that may be. And that may be 150 bucks a visit. And you may not get great care. You may pay 150 Right. Yeah, and then, but you, you know, you, so you pay cash. I believe if you pay cash, you should get a cash product, you know, or you should get a discount. But if you pay cash or you pay insurance, you're still going to wait for two weeks potentially, or three weeks, or two months, or two years, whatever, and you're still going to be seen for five minutes, or seven minutes, whatever. And there's those doctors out there who do insurance-based practice and are able to see patients and take time with their patients and, you know, do a good job. It's because that doctor is gone above and beyond because he or she is at home doing the work that they should have done throughout the day, and he or she is also running late because they don't want to shortchange the next patient. So if you ever go to a doctor that takes really good care of you, they usually run late, and it's not their fault, because they want to give that person the benefit of a, a reasonable visit, just like they want to give you. I used to take my mother to a psychiatrist. It would be not unusual to wait two hours. You're like, my goodness. But this was the only psychiatrist that was good enough for her. And so I understood that when I got in there, that she was going to get 25 minutes, okay? But that's the price you pay in the insurance world. Luckily for us, we don't have to do that. Luckily for us, we're able to give an affordable price or um, a great product for an affordable price. Yes, sir. So, in, in essence, in summary, you know, it, it's kind of like you're taking medicine to what it was 30, 40 years ago when you had a family physician yeah. that actually took care of the family, knew the family history, and was able mm -hmm. to give them a personal care versus the, the big machine yep. that it's become to now. It's so funny you say that. There's a gentleman I know on LinkedIn named David Newman, and he read one of my columns, all right, for AskDrTommy.com, which is my website, but I also write on other places. And he read one of my columns on LinkedIn, and he made a comment in the <clears throat> comment section. He's like, I love this. It's like Mayberry in color. So I said, I'm going to steal that, and I will credit you whenever I use it. So, <laughs> David. <laughs> but, yeah, Mayberry in color. Does anybody else have any more questions in Wesley Chapel, next to the Sonovas Bank Road. Because she has to leave real quick, you want to draw real quick, she walked. I can, I can, or if you want to do that, yeah. Okay, you can take it for us. I can do it, yeah. Bye-bye, thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Tommy, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you.